my top 10 games of the year. I had one honorable mention. Then this guy comes in and ruins it. So I moved it to three on the fly. Go for so it. So there you go. First honorable mention that would have for sure cracked this list if it had come earlier and I had time to digest it. Life is strange. Mm. Caveat, it did come earlier. I just didn't play it till this break. Life is Strange, I had heard so many good things about. Uh, I had played episode one upon release, not knowing much about it. So when you got to like some of the twists at the end and stuff, I was like, this is weird and I don't know how I feel about it. And so then just by happenstance, all the other episodes piled up. This uh, break, I sat down and played through them all and blown away. Such a great game. So much fun. <coughs> love the story. Love the characters. Love the world. Just this little seaside town or whatever. And again, I don't. it's one of those I don't want to go in and knock off one of these games that I've thought about to put it in there. So it has to be an honorable mention, but it would have for sure made my top 10 list. A lot of people Otherwise, have recommended me to play that Oh, game. you dig it. Yeah, you would dig it a lot. I hear yeah, they say yeah. hella a lot. They do say hella a lot. Chloe says hella a lot. I'm going to do it. You're a big hella fan? I am. All right, cool. So play Life is Strange, everybody. That's getting a disc-based release in the oh, cool. now in the new year anyway. So like you can this. get there too. Uh, next honorable mention, alphabetical order, of course. Mm -hmm. Taco, motherfucking master. Good lord, Greg. You're I unstoppable. I don't. He can put here's a loot on there. Nobody gives him shit. Another iOS game All just right. ported over. That's super simple and doesn't mean much. Taco Master, fun, three bucks, a platinum in an afternoon. What else could I want out of a uh, for the Vita? Something I can then, because I, you know what I did with it? I took it to Star Wars and platinumed it waiting for Star Wars to start. Sounded perfect. It was great. You know yeah. what I mean? Going with the right expectations, you're going to have fun with Taco Master. Greg Miller's honorable mention number two of the year. Did you make it hit the, the charts? We don't know yet. Okay. I, I, have, a, I have a feeling when, the ch when they release digital sales on the PSN of what charted for the month, Taco Master should be on there for the Vita games. And it's going to be a thousand percent because of us. That's amazing. Because if you didn't know. Because of you. Take some credit for that. Because of me. And if you didn't know, <laughs> yeah, it's I because no everyone who owns a Vita and wants to play Vita games watches kind of funny. And so when they hear us say, hey, there's this Vita game everybody should play. Everybody's like, oh, okay, cool. Just like that uh, trail, cold Trails of Steel. What is it? That supposedly is JRPG steel, on Vita. Blood, I'm trying to get a copy right now. And even then I'm going to be behind on it. But that's supposed to be really good too. So everybody keep your eye out on that one. And then third honorable mention, Witcher 3. Mm. Witcher 3. Uh, this year, I really, I was, you know, in the mood. Oh, we hit 45? We hit. 45, everybody, been hit. $45,000 on patreon.com slash kind of funny. Thank you very much, Twitch people who are watching this live. People who are watching this or listening to it later as a games cast, please consider going to patreon.com slash kind of funny, supporting Nick Scarpino's dream for an animated series. We want to get 12 episodes. We're halfway there. We are. Uh, Witcher 3 came about this year and this year i think when we knew or at least had been had the you know call was right moment even before we had the call was right and we just had the prediction of fallout 4 coming that year i was like yes that sounds so awesome i want an open world to get lost in and take quests and wander around and do all these different things and and witcher 3 came in the summer before we got that before we got batman and i saw it and the more i heard about it and saw videos for it, i was like I don't like fantasy. It's just not my thing. I don't like magic. I don't like medieval times kind of crap. You know what I mean? But it looked fun. And I got it, played it for 25, 30 hours, and I had a great time with it. And it's weird because now that I'm starting to knock things off my you know, list, my backlog now or at least, I feel myself being a bit drawn back to it. I'm like, mm -hmm. I want to go check in and see what's up and go a little bit further, especially because I watched uh, Christine's game, favorite games of the year, right? And obviously she's a huge Witcher fan. And what I never... Just Witcher. <laughs> yeah, which are over and over again. What I'd never heard her talk about, and she talked about in the video, was the fact that, yeah, Act 1 does go on too long, but Act 2 and 3 pick up and get crazy, and that's really where it is. And I was like, oh, well, fuck. I never I got out Act 1 or whatever. You know what I mean? I was running around. I'd like to see why so many people, when we say, no, my game leader, freak out about it. So yeah. many people lose their shit and say it's the best, and I've put hundreds of hours in it, and I beat it. I couldn't believe the ending. I'm like, all right, maybe I should get, give it another shot. And maybe I'll have some time, but probably not. Because, you mm -hmm. know. Spoilers. Taco Master 2 got to be coming eventually. That's true. So now we're into top 10 alphabetical order. That means Batman Arkham Knight's at the top of the list. Now, what I find interesting about Batman Arkham Knight is when I talk about it and when we've talked about it before and da da da, da I always feel like I talk about the negatives first. You know what I mean? I don't like the bat. I don't like the tank. I didn't like I didn't like fucking strafing around shooting 43 things out of the sky and these guys shooting missiles at me and all that dumb shit. You know, I didn't like the fact that they I mean, I always say lied, but I say it in a joking way that, you know, they said, oh, Arkham Knight's a character of our own creation. And then it wasn't. And I'm not going to spoil it. But, you know, it was like, oh, and it was like choreographed. Like they telegraphed it way early. The thing here's the thing. 
in I'm going to spoil Batman Arkham Origins. Batman Arkham Origins was set up as this is a game about Black Mask hiring all these people. And you're like, that sounds pretty cool. And you played Arkham Origins, and I think it was in the first hour, but maybe the first hour and a half, where it's like, ha ha, no it's not, I'm the Joker, and this is the Joker's origin story. And you were like, holy fuck! That was like, well, yes, yes a million times. And you played through it, and it was awesome, and it doesn't get enough credit as a game, or Batman Joker story, because it's amazing. Arkham Knight went the opposite way of like, we, you think this guy's a new guy, but he's not. And they did that seven or eight hours in or whatever the hell it was. And I'd figured it out at hour two. Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, like, well, is there any real? Like, and I feel like that's what I talk about. And part of that is the fact that Batman games are good, great or great games or whatever you wanted to call them. Right. They're everybody. Li- most everybody not call. You don't just like the combat usually. Uh, most everybody likes Batman. They're positive. But at the third one, what do, you know what I mean? What do we, you, there's only so much left of the good stuff to say. Like the expectations start getting so high, you get into an Uncharted 3 situation where, you know, no matter what, it's the negatives that are going to stand out. But I, I mean, I loved the gameplay. I love the world. Beautiful. The story is good. Uh, there are some great twists and turns that I didn't see. The one thing I always, I love about Rocksteady, and I don't know if I'll forget it again, but... I feel like with every one of the Batman games they did in their Arkham trilogy is the fact that you play it and it's just a regular Batman game for so long. And then there's always something, some crazy thing they do where like, you know, in the, in Arkham Asylum, right? Where you all of a sudden start walking around as Bruce Wayne, you know what I mean? After his parents get shot and you're baby Bruce Wayne or whatever, or, you know, then in Arkham city, you get dropped into the Mad Hatter's thing and it's all a twist around. And it's like for so long, it's just been, I'm running around fighting criminals. And all of a sudden now I'm in this, weird world or the scarecrow missions where he's stabbing the ground and stuff like you don't see that coming and arkham knight did that again in two different ways that i want to spoil and i was like oh shit that was really cool and i didn't expect that you know Mm. what i mean and i loved it i also as always am one of the few people i ever see defending the season pass in their dlc Uh, i bought the season pass originally beginning it delivered what my expectations were for it you know what i mean if not even a little bit more and the fact that i bought it because i was excited for Batgirl's mission, they said they're going to do some character missions and then some stuff at the end. I was waiting for all that. But lo and behold, I found myself, every time I jump in to play Nightwing's 20 or 30 minute mission or whatever the hell it was, I'd beat that and then I'd go out and be like, oh, right, and I have all these Batmobiles and mm-hmm. I have all these challenges. And I'm like, oh, that silver isn't that hard to get. I should try. And I have all those trophies now. You know what I mean? I looked at my game clock and it was something like I platinum Arkham Knight, then did all the DLC trophies. And before I got... I probably put like 75 or 80 hours in Arkham oh Knight, God. according to it. You know what I mean? Maybe, you know, 70 to 80, we'll say somewhere in there, based on the fact that I think it was 64 before I'd really launched into the DLC over. And that's preposterous. I did not expect that when we were talking about Arkham Knight, when we were looking into Arkham Knight ahead of time. You know what I mean? I thought I'd play it for that summer period before Metal Gear and in between, in before, or after Witcher. And so to come back and actually use this season pass is something weird for me because I buy them a lot. Where I'm like, I like your game and I want to support you. You know what I mean? Like Witcher is one of those ones. I don't know if I'll ever get to the content. Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, I did the same thing. I don't know if I'll ever really get to that content. And here I did. That was cool. Uh, next one on my list of my real top 10, number two, but not ordered, alphabetical. Emily's Away. We've already talked about it. You hit the nail on the head. Like that game, I talk about it. You know, when I talk about that game and write about that game, what I say is like, we sat down to play this game and it turned out that it was a time machine. Like playing that game and picking your buddy icon and typing like I am immediately and I it's one of those like it's such a Greg memory that it's hard to explain but I'm taken back to my desk at Mizzou where I had freshman year taken out I'd find funny things and cut them out and then tape them to my desk and I had my giant Toshiba laptop here and my window out to the wall in front of Hatch dormitory and I am there talking to my high school friends and misconnection high school girls where it was like you know what i mean like we i didn't know what i was doing they didn't know what they're doing you're, 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 a lot of sups sup exactly yeah, yeah you know and like when we like started clicking through and seeing people's away messages and their profile where they're, they're quoting a band and they're doing this and it's like right like it was such it was it was a literal time capsule where you know what i mean like all of a sudden i am back in 2002 i am right there you know what i mean i'm watching I'm back in 2001 i forget when it's actually set i know it's early 2000s but for me i'm back in 2001 right where 
I, like they had the Blink 182 take off your pants and jacket like album cover as a buddy icon and I so distinctly remember seeing them at the Warp Tour and having that album and in my freshman uh, year roommate that was assigned to me through Mizzou like being oh I like Blink 182 oh you have that one I have this version We're like talking about that and that was something we talked about you know what I mean yeah. like that's a really good point it's not only did they nail the the aim aspects of it and the buddy icons and the yeah. way message and stuff it's like the time machine thing of having the the icons like you didn't choose your icon it was well you didn't like make your own or whatever it's like yeah. you chose from a list and that list was just a bunch of like 2004 things like these are the albums that came out then and we had fun looking at them and being like all right this is eminem this is you know black eyed peas this is whatever yeah, yeah. what is that what is that yeah, we and called like, Colin sit there and it's like them, yeah. oh yeah it's Dre. and like that's cool you know like they, yeah. they nailed it and they nailed a way where it's like you the game just made you think differently it made you think like wow okay wh- what was happening yeah then? You know, like, what did my iPod look like? Yep. Then? Yep. And that's the thing on, a, on you know, we uh, on our sister podcast, the Game Over Greggy show, we've talked about nostalgia a lot. You know what I mean? And this game made me nostalgic for things I didn't realize I missed or that because like who would ever think that like I would miss the aim sound effects or what? Yeah. How like the little pixelated logos or anything. You know I mean, it's like stuff that like if you were to talk to me about aim, I would list a million. I would miss, list a million things, tell you stories, but not the the feeling of using the program. Mm. And this nailed that. And then, yeah, to have the conversations and you and me are like trying to not, we're trying to play this like emotional chess match, right? With this girl where yeah. it's like, we don't want to pick wrong because we're not trying like the way the whole thing, That's you know, right. it's just so amazing. Good. Amazing. Uh, next on my list of top 10, Fallout 4. Uh, Fallout 4 for me, you know, I, I think the the most telling conversation we had about it was leading into the games cast when you were talking to Colin and I about it before we had it. And you're like, well, what does it need to do to be great? Or what is it? And I'm like, right now, my expectation is it's going to be a souped up version of Fallout 3. It'll look better, run better, be like Fallout 3. And then that'll be, make a great game. And for it to be amazing, it'll do something I'm not prepared for. And I don't know. And that's what will blow me away with it. Right. And now looking back at Fallout 4, having the platinum trophy, being excited for the DLC, it did the first thing. It just was a souped up version of Fallout 3, which is great. You know what I mean? Like, that's not a knock on it. It just never jumped to this thing where I was like, oh my God, I can't, you know what I mean? It added the base building stuff, which I hate, which I think is poorly executed and wasn't fun. And I didn't really put any time into it until I needed the trophy. And then it turned out that it sucked doing it that way. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? There was no, for me, and maybe I missed it, even though I, like I said, had the platinum, played that game in a million different ways. There was no draw to go do base building until you needed that trophy. And like mm. that sucked. You know what I mean? And it sucked not being able to make things the way you really wanted them to look or line up walls. I remember when I started doing it, like the walls aren't snapping to corners the right way. So you have these janky houses. And I'd complain about it online. People are like, well, it's post apocalyptic. It's supposed to look. I'm like, I get that. But like, well, that's not what I want right now. You know what I mean? I don't want it to look like porcelain, fine glass in China or something. I want it to look, you know, like there's a straight corner. And it's, it's dumb, but it like, Took me out of it. And I'm like, I don't want to do this. I'm not going to yeah. do this. And I ran, ran around the countryside and did a million things. And I love that. I had such a great time with that. You know what I mean? And that's why it's there. And that's why I love it. But it really is like, it's more Fallout 3. And that's great. And that's what I wanted. But I always feel like when I talk about it, it's like, all right, yeah. It's what you expected. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We knew who they were. We let them off the hook. Mm-hmm. You want to crown its ass? Crown its ass. Denny uh, Green. Next one up on my list, IDARB. Mm. Uh, like, yeah, I think we, t- you know, you talked about it. We talked about it. I'd arm so much fun to play. You know what I mean? Like that was when we, for me, it'll always be one of the solidifying moments of what kind of funny games was. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? We, we literally a year ago today, we launched all this and then started trying to figure out what we were and how we did let's plays. And when we did that first let's play and we were like, what is this game? Okay. Well, and then it was like, there was that switch. We're like, Holy sh- We need more controllers. Get all eight controllers. We all need, you know what I mean? It was like, this is amazing. It's so much fun. And mm-hmm. it's it, it strikes me in the same vein as Rocket League, where you can take the controller and you can play it and you can jump in and you can have a great time. And then you can also sit there and spend hours getting amazing at it and then be on a whole different level. But either way, it's still fun. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Loved the characters. Loved having, being able to play as Invincible in a video game. You know what I mean? Loved the fact that people could create us and send in all this different stuff. Had an amazing time with it. Uh, next up in my top 10 in alphabetical order, Lego Dimensions. Of course. I, you say, of course, and it's like Lego Dimensions for me was such a slow sell. You know what I mean? And it's because I'm a big Lego game fan, period. But when they did that trailer that was like, we're getting into, you know, the toys of life genre or whatever, I was like, 
okay, cool. And we were doing Colin and Greg live and people were, and I was like, we're talking about it. And Colin, you know, Colin read the story. We watched the trailer. And he's like, so what do you think, Greg? And I'm like, I don't know, man. I say, I'm like, I don't know. I'll check it out as it gets closer. I like TT games, but for them to, for me to be guaranteed to buy it, they need to put Superman and Ghostbusters yeah. in it. And then the chat was like, they tease those at the end of the trailer. You just watched, but you cut it off early. I was like, well, all right, Done. I'm in. You know what I mean? And then at Comic-Con, I finally got to play it and see it in action. And I was like, oh, it's the Lego games. You know what I mean? And I remember getting the demo and the guy's like, well, what did you think it was going to be? And I'm like, I don't know. Like Disney Infinity. Like the other Toys to Life stuff. That's- Disney Infinity's fine, but it's very basic and it's running around and it's doing this. And like, I didn't expect it was going to be that you're taking the Lego games of different genres, shoving them together and then giving me minifigs. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, that's cool. And I was like, all right, that, now I'm more excited for this game. I already said I was going to buy and I was taking photos of like Chell and all these different characters. And then you jump to when they came in to do the stream with us here on uh, twitch.tv slash kind of funny games. And when they came in and sat down and actually played it and let me do it and they started from the beginning and they're like, all right, and now like they, you know, faked it because we were doing a stream, but like they pulled up the thing and like, otherwise you'd have to go through this instruction. I'm like, wait, you build the toys while you're playing the game? And they're like, yeah. And then I was like watching and like, we're in the back to the future level and it's got like the out of time logo and that. And it's Huey Lewis and the news is playing as you go around Hill Valley Square and then you go to the future and you go way back to the old west. And I was like, I can't fucking believe this. And they're like, yes, it's almost like we actually care. And you're like, yeah, that's the thing. You're like, I'm not knocking anybody who makes licensed games or anything, but this one had every one of the levels in Lego Dimensions, and I don't mean the level packs. I mean the stuff that's built on the disc with the three three characters. It's built with the love and passion of the other Lego games. Mm. You know what I mean? The other Lego games I fall in love with when I play a Star Wars or a DC one, right? Where it's like there's all these little things. They're all there, and that you know, then you play it and it's one of the rare occasions where I'm playing something like that and it works in reverse where I played the Doctor Who level and I was like, huh, Doctor Who seems, seems kind of cool and I went and watched Doctor Who level and I was like, huh. And then I bought the Doctor Who level pack. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, it, it works. They got you. Yeah, you know what I mean? And I want to watch more even though I'm just bored. But I watched that one, they, that crossover Doctor Who they had with uh, Jessica Jones. That was really interesting. Next game on my list. It was a joke. I got it. Okay, just, okay. Yeah. Metal Gear Solid Five. Uh, and there's not much left to say about Metal Gear Solid Five. You talked a lot about it. You meant you brought up the gameplay loop. You know, I had to go back to another one. This was a, a a sell for me, honestly. When when Ground Zeroes had come out at IG, I was at IGN. I was on the hosting duties already, so I wasn't like going to preview events and stuff. And so I remember, I think it was Mitch came back and said, "You are gonna love this. It's Peace Walker." You know what I mean? And I'm like, "Oh my god!" And then Ground Zeroes came out, and I took a day off work to play that and Titanfall and stream them. And I put Ground Zeroes in, and I got through the main mission, and then I tried to do all the side stuff, and I was like, "Oh, like I'm getting captured every five seconds. I feel totally impotent in this game." And like the way the concrete walls go up there on the side, I'm like. It doesn't feel freeing. It feels more constricting. You know what I mean? And I'd never, I'd, it was like, whatever. And so then when we left a year ago today and I got invited down to that preview thing, I went down preview like, this is cool. I'm excited to play. And then it was like, you played that. And I was like, holy shit. Like, this is awesome. And I came back and told you like, mm-hmm. unless Fallout does something, that's going to be my game of the year. You know what I mean? And then to go and play it and then be whatever, 120, 30 hours into it now. It's just like that game for me is, you know, incredible it's amazing you know what i mean and it's like what you said uh, and i'm one of the guys who says it like i don't think the story's that great you know i don't think the story's bad i don't think it's like memorable metal gear you know what i mean i don't think it's like changing the life but the gameplay like you know what i mean even when we sat down and did the extra live stream and i was back here trying to platinum it i'm, I'm picking up and jumping in and immediately it's just like oh this is, feels so good you know what i mean this is so much fun to tackle these ops from different things and do this and i'm gonna change my loadout and it's just like yes this is Peace Walker. Ground, uh, Ground Zeroes wasn't. I think Phantom Pain is. And that's why I like it. Uh, next up, Rise of the Tomb Raider. Shout out to Nicole Tan. Um, beautiful game. Uh, another game that I think really nails a gameplay loop. You know what I mean? Like, all right, you're into this new environment. You come in and it's like, great. Here's your little mission. There's your main mission. You do the little mission, which gives you another little mission, which gives you another little mission. Here are the coin, coin caches. And here's this thing. Oh, there's a tomb over here. Oh, and like hour and a half later like whoa oh, the main mission right i'm supposed to do that but i'm so close you hit pause and you see all the one out of fives and th- oh i got four out of five here i might as well try to find this last relic or and i'd really like to get my russian boosted up a bit so i can d- it's like hell yeah this game's awesome you know what i mean like mm. that is and this is what i always say and it gets me a lot of hate i really wish that would have come to playstation because i'd love to add that platinum to my collection like i there's so many other things i want to play that i don't want to invest in xbox to get the thousand points because i'm just not an achievement guy you know what i mean but playing through that game, I'm it, it was just so good. It was mm. so much fun to play. Story again, though. 
totally forgettable. I feel like playing through it and they're like, well, well, and I was like, okay. And then they reintroduce this guy that you saw in the very beginning and he says something and she's like, oh, and I'm like, oh, right. You were in, you were in the first Tomb Raider, weren't you? Fuck. I don't remember any of you guys except the guy with the escape <laughs> shirt. Did he even live? I don't know. Whatever. You all suck. Next up, another Xbox One exclusive slash on PC as well. State of Decay, year one survival edition. My story with State of Decay is uh, at IGN. McCaffrey and I had done a bunch of Let's Plays for it. Uh, it came out on 360 and PC, and it came out, I think, right before or literally right after E3. And so I was exhausted when I came back from E3, tried to play it, and I was like, I don't want to play right now. I'll get back to it. Never got back to it. Mm. So when State of Decay survival edition came out, I was like, yeah, all right, cool. And then, yeah, that was two weeks of my life just bashing zombies in the head, clearing off things. Cause it was just, it was scratching all the needs I, or things or the itches I wanted from open world games of here's the map and I'm putting a big X over this building. I've searched everything in that building and now I'm going to go do that. And in between those, you're taking your rucksack back to base and doing this and killing a zombie and oh wait, there's somebody over there and there's a horde. And you know what I mean? Like I existed in that world. This was a year where I just wanted to get into games and exist in them. VR, right? Next one. Tales from the Borderlands. Oh, man. What? The pause after Tales for a second. I was like, thought you were fucking around. Oh, no. Thought you were going with some Tales of whatever the hell. Oh, ta- <laughs> Tales of Exilia. <laughs> no, Tales from the Borderlands. Uh, you know, for Tales of the Borderlands, like, I like Telltale. Uh, I don't play Telltale games that don't interest me. So, you know, I didn't. I don't like Wolf Among Us. Didn't play it. I, you know, I've tried episode one. Wasn't my bag. Tried uh, Game of Thrones episode one. Just not my bag. I'm not fans of those universes necessarily. Meanwhile, Walking Dead, I'm going to jump into and be crazy with, right? Tales from Borderlands came out, though, and it was the same thing. I was just like, I've never given a shit about... I, I love playing Borderlands because I love co-op games with Christine and getting cool guns and leveling up and doing all that stuff. I've never cared about the universe. You know what I mean? Like, that's never... I'm like, tell me a story in the Borderlands universe. I was like, whatever. It came out, downloaded it, and it just sat on my PS4 forever. And then there was some day we had had here that went poorly. And I was bent out of shape and grumpy at the end of the night. And I was out here and it was one of those I wanted probably Fallout. And nothing is not out. Nothing's filling that, you know, void of what I want to play. And I eventually came through the rotation on the PlayStation 4. And it was like, Tails, like, sure, I'll give this a shot. And I was totally thinking it's going to be, it's going to be a Game of Thrones. It's going to be a Wolf Among Us where I'll play episode one and be like, this is not for me. And instead, 15 minutes later, I'm laughing and I'm totally into it. And I love the characters. And then every episode after that, came out and was hilarious and funny and endearing. And like, I still sit here and I, I talk about, you know, loader bot when he's like, it's a mixed bag and the, your introduction of or introduction of Gordis and stuff like that. And it's just like, this is awesome. Like there is so much comedy in that game. that's so well done. Like, and it was, so it's my surprise of the year. Like mm. you were talking earlier in the show, which seems like a year and a half ago. I know but it's ridiculous. It was, we're, we have so much to say about the games we love. Tales blew me away. Wasn't yeah. expecting it to be that great, and it was awesome. I want to give a shout out to Game of Thrones, just real quick. I Good. only played the first episode, but I enjoyed it, and it was one of those things. Oh, I'll get to it when it's done. And then yeah, I, I, guess, I guess it's done now. I think so. Yeah, Christine it, played through it. Was, it. I, there's six episodes. I think, yeah, in this one. And then final one, because uh, the alphabetical list until dawn. In that mm-hmm. one, for sure, I don't have to beat. We all love until we, dawn. We We've it. talked about until dawn. I lo- I I was upset when I, we did the live stream for Extra Life. When I was over here trying to stay awake and I kept taking cat naps and I, I don't know what made me think this, but you're getting close to the ending and I just wanted to see your final c- confrontation in that house because I was enjoying watching you play period because uh-huh. it's fun after your first playthrough to watch other people and be like, oh, they don't know what's about to happen. You know, oh, well, I didn't do that. What's oh, OK. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you were and I just, I'm like, I just want to see who survives. And I'm like, I'll take I'll shut my eyes and I'll totally wake up before. And I woke up as the credits are rolling. I'm like, God fucking damn. <laughs> but yeah, until dawn's great. Yeah, it is awesome. All right. Let's check in real quick. Where are we at with stuff, Kevin? Can you give us any? Anything? Here, I'll look. Kevin's Nick. looking I'll at a book. Nick. He I'll can't look. help I you. I got it. I got it. I got it. Yeah, no, sorry. I'm, Kevin, I didn't know what you were. Don't ever apologize. You're perfect. Two hundred and fifty-six dollars. All right. So eight hundred dollars away from having to wax me. I, I want to wax you so bad. Please don't man. wax me. It's gonna be great. All right, 